What if I tell you that you are color grading your HLG and S-Log footage wrong? Lots of people have been asking me how I get beautiful colors with my HLG and S-Log footage and my skin tones look so much flattering. Today I am going to show you what you are doing wrong and show the science behind color correcting the log footages. So let's watch the intro and then jump into the DaVinci Resolve and start the tutorial. I have imported my footage into DaVinci Resolve and this was shot with HLG3 picture profile. Let me first start with the wrong way which a lot of people do. They start by giving the footage some contrast, for example they give it some gain, fix the gamma, bring down the lift to give it some contrast, they give it some saturation for example and they change the temperature and they do the color correction and then they move to the next note to do their color uh, grading but there is something wrong here when you shoot your videos in log format uh, it doesn't matter what camera or what kind of log format it could be sony s-log sony hlg canon c-log ari log or any other camera there are two things to consider one is the video gamma curve and the other thing is the video color space when you start adding con contrast to your, for example, S-Log3 uh, footage, you are just uh, fixing the gamma curve to change it to Rec 709 by giving it some contrast. But the thing you are not doing here is not changing the color space of your video. Like you see here, we have a color, a different color spaces, for example, uh, S-Gamut3, S-Gamut3 Cine, uh, BT2020, DCI-P3 and uh, ITUR BT709. Uh, this is the Rec709 color space which is the standard for most social networks and TVs and broadcasts. And uh, when you shoot your video in log format, uh, for example S-Log3, uh, the color space of your video is s 3 uh, or it could be s 3 uh, Cine or for example uh, I shot this footage with HLG3 uh, picture profile which the color space of that picture profile was BT2020 which is this section uh, marked with the green as you see here so what you are not doing here uh, is that you are not uh, converting the color space to this uh, Rec 709 uh, in order to deliver it uh, to social networks or TVs and you are just converting the video gamma curve by giving it some contrast. So that's why a lot of people complain that they are not getting beautiful colors with their HLG3 or S-Log2 profiles and their skin tones are not good. So what is the solution here? You need a way to properly convert both your video gamma curve and also the color space to Rec 709. There are multiple ways for doing this but today I am going to talk about the color space transform feature of DaVinci Resolve. Let me first reset these nodes. Now uh, I will create a new node and I will call this uh, color space. And the first node I will use for my primaries and uh, white balance and saturation. Uh, I will go to the pr uh, color space transform node and from the F open FX I will search for color space transform. So we have four options here, input color space, input gamma, output color space and output gamma. The first option as I said for this video which was uh, shot with HLG3 picture profile is the color space and the color space of HLG3 is BT2020. So I will search for BT2020 via Rec2020 which is the same as the BT20, I will select this. When I select this, uh, take a look at here the colors change uh, we have properly converted the color space from bt2020 uh, to rec 709 which i will select here output color space our timeline should be rec 709 as i said for delivering to social networks and media which the standard of them is rec 709 uh, when i change it you do not see any difference because the in davinci resolve the default uh, color space of the timeline is rec 709 so this is uh, the color space conversion which uh, we did not do in the wrong way uh, but we are doing this here and the only thing remains is the uh, gamma curve conversion now we need to change the gamma curve of the hlg3 uh, which the gamma curve for the hlg3 is the 
REC 2120HLG is the gamma curve for the HLG3. I will select this. As you see, it becomes so much contrasty and dark. And the output gamma of the timeline, we will sele select the REC 709, which is the standard for the media and social networks. Here you see REC 709. And as you see, we have a lot of difference here. If I disable and enable this node, you will see we have much difference. And just look at the skin colors here. It was so much pale and it was not flattering, but now look at this. We have so much difference in the skin colors and the skin tones. I can again show you with the, this, I will create a selection of the skin here. I just want to show the skin change on the vector scope so you can better see. I will select my vector scope. I will uh, enable the skin tone in the actor. Uh, here you see uh, this is after uh, in enabling after uh, transforming the color space and if i disable this if i disable this uh, color space you will see that the skin tone was way off you can see how much it has changed it was so pale it was uh, somehow greenish but now after i have changed it uh, to the i have changed the color space you see that the skin tone is right on the line of the skin tone in the actor and you don't you don't even have to fix the skin tones here and, and have you have a beautiful skin tone so after you use the color space transform function then you can just go to the primaries node and start your color correcting process by for example if you want to give it some contrast or just make it darker or lighter then you can do this in the first node you can de decrease the saturation or increase it or change the temperature and then keep on doing your color grading or and whatever you want to do to give it your creative style then you can do it really easily and correctly the first thing which is really important guys is always doing the proper color correcting which we did here now let me show you another example this time with the S-Log2 footage this footage was shot with S-Log2 with Sony a7 III so again I will create a new node here for the second node color space transform again i will add the color space transform effect to my second node so for the s log 2 the color space is the s sony s gamut i will select the sony s gamut here and as i select it, you will see that the colors have changed and the input gamma i will select the video gamma for the s log 2 which is s log 2 you will find it here sony s log 2 and as you see, it has uh, affected the contrast and made my uh, picture much contrasty. And now I will select my output color space. Again, here you, I check the Rec 709. And the output gamma again here, I will select the Rec 709 like before. Now uh, you can go to your uh, primaries node and uh, start uh, balancing your picture. You can bring down the, bring down the lift to give it some contrast. You can decrease the highlights to recover some of the highlight details and then you can bring up the gamma. You can bring down the lift and start balancing your picture. You can give it some gain. It depends on the look you are going, go, going for, but here in the first node, you are just color correcting your note you can give it some uh, saturation it depends on what look you are going to make uh, and you can even change the temperature here but here as you see we have properly converted the s log 2 to rec 709 both in video gamma curve and video color space which will give us a beautiful image and not that uh, pale colors and unpleasant skin tones again if i zoom on the picture and on the skin tone and if i disable and enable this you will see there is so much difference in the skin tone color it has brought the skin tone to life it was really bad before converting so the color space transform is really important uh, for converting your color space guys there are also some other ways to convert your video color space for example by using correction lots uh, but i do not really like it i prefer the color space transfer but uh, in the davinci resolve 17 there is a new option here in the color management section which you can use it for your to work in a color managed timeline 
Here you see color managed, YRGB color managed. Uh, DaVinci Resolve team has developed a new white gamut, DaVinci white gamut. They say that it is the widest color gamut. Uh, it uh, covers all of them and uh, you can use it uh, to work in a color managed timeline and edit your uh, videos. I am just uh, starting to utilize this uh, DaVinci white gamut. I will definitely make a video about it in the future. So if you want to know more about this uh, DaVinci white gamut, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you do not miss that video. It is really game changer guys. I am just uh, starting to use it and I really like it. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope this tutorial was useful for you and if you liked it, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel so you do not miss any of my upcoming videos in the future. Have a great day and I will see you in the next videos.